Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to show you how to build this bike. So one of the questions I'm always getting asked is how to build an electric mountain bike for the trails. Now you've all seen some of my other videos, I've built lots of different electric bikes right the way from sort of simple commuter bikes all the way through to ridiculously powerful electric motorcycles. The one thing I haven't done yet is build a super high performance electric mountain bike designed for the trails that is going to give the top brands a big run for their money. Because I know there's a lot of mountain bike builders out there, the sort of guys that like to get their hands dirty, like to build a bike from scratch, you know, starting with a frame and working upwards to get the bike exactly how they want to get it. Now traditionally with a high-end mountain bike, that's pretty easy to do because you can just get all the bits and pieces and put them together and build your ultimate bike. But with an e-bike, it gets a bit more complicated because unless you kind of bodge things together and strap batteries here and put things over there and, you know, do, the, do all this crazy stuff that I've been doing on the channel for a long time, you know, unless you do that, then up until now, there hasn't really been an option. If you want a bike that's going to perform well off-road and in the mountains and all of that sort of thing, you know, and you want it to look factory, your only option is really go and buy a really high-end bike from Specialized or Trek or any of these high-end e-bike producers at the moment. And they are super expensive. So that's where I'm coming from. What if you could build your own electric mountain bike from scratch and you can make it outperform everything else that is out there. You can put on all the components you want to make it look and feel as if you've just gone and spent 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, whatever they've cost charging for these bikes these days because it is pretty ridiculous. And also with a lot of those bikes, the performance isn't as good as they're saying. I mean, at best you're gonna have a 250 watt motor. Maybe if you live in another part of the world, you know, we're getting 750 and 1,000 watts now. But this is all pretty low power stuff and the technology that us as a community is this sort of e-bike fraternity that's kind of built up on this channel and I know lots of others. Our stuff is a lot more advanced than these main manufacturers are putting out at the moment. Anyway, what you're about to see is the build process of what I think is probably the best bike I've actually ever built and it all starts with this frame. Now this frame, we're going to be selling this frame in the shop so if you're interested in doing this then you know keep an eye out on there, link will be in the description and everything else. But this is a full suspension frame, it's a standard 27.5 inch frame, it's aluminium or aluminium if you live in the States. It's got a standard one and a half inch tapered head tube. It's got a lovely matte black finished paintwork which just gives it just a completely blank canvas. You can do what you want with it. Designed for 160 mil travel on the front and 50 mil on the back, so using a 190 by 50 rear shock. And the battery mount's pretty cool. It's actually not in the frame, but you can mount the battery on the outside with this special mount. A bit like a high bike sort of thing. All the cables are internally rooted, so there's nothing flapping or hanging around on the outside. This is not a DIY e-bike, guys. This is something that everyone will look at and go, where did you buy that? Now, before we dive into the building, I'll just tell you a little bit about this motor. This is the motor from Bafang. It's called the M620. I think it used to be called the Ultra, but basically, yeah, it's the M620. It comes with a colored display. It's a complete package. We're gonna do it as a complete package with the motor and the frame together, and obviously, maybe the motor as well on its own if you wanna put it in something else. But the thing about this motor is designed to fit in a frame for this motor. And this motor is insane. It puts out nearly 160 newton meters of torque, which is just crazy. We're gonna talk about torque rather than power here because the peak power on this, I mean, it can peak at over 1500 watts, nearly 2000. So standard DIY e-bikers kind of power levels, but you don't actually have to run that high if you're concerned about kind of, you know, not going too high on the, on the wattage. It's the torque that is gonna make the difference here. The torque on this will just blow anything out of the water. On a bike this light, it will just, it will kill anything. Up hills, whatever your weight, you will not have a problem up any hill. You'll be able to do power wheelies, it's gonna be crazy. It's really something special, guys. I'm really excited about this. And we've got a battery to match, which can just deliver the performance that it needs to, that the motor needs from this. So without further ado, let's get onto the build process and get this thing done. Right, so here's the Bafang motor kit. So this is the M620, which is an absolute beast of a, of a motor. You can see that there. Um, obviously all the wires hanging out of there, ready to be connected. So the rest of the kit, basically what we've got here, right, so starting up there at the top, you've got the power leads, that's for the battery power leads, so you've got Anderson connectors on there. This little lead here is basically to connect the motor and its controller to the display on the handlebars. It's also got um, another connector for the thumb throttle and e-brakes if you're gonna use those. This here is the plastic kind of cover that goes on the outside of the motor because when you actually fit it to the frame, it actually is exposed, so then you need to put this over the top of it, um, which you know basically covers up the bolts which hold the motor on. Thumb throttle, 
and you've got up there then you've got like the retaining ring which holds the um, the chain ring on the uh, on the actual crank display really nice color display looking forward to giving that a go crank arms down there and then you've got a speed sensor there which goes on the rear wheel there's a little magnet included in that as well down there you've got the e-brake connectors and then you've got a 42 tooth chain ring so there's not many parts to it really but this thing look at this beast save the plastic film removal right to the end i think right so the first thing we're going to do is install our power lead so the battery obviously goes here so there's a little hole here which you can basically use to thread these wires so this is the power lead the one with the anderson connectors on the end so that basically just goes through this little hole here and then you can sort of pull that out put it through there and then that basically just leaves the anderson connectors at the other end we've got bags of wire which we'll cut off at a later point but yeah so the, the anderson connectors are there which then obviously go straight on the motor there now the next thing we want to do is take the display connector which is this white one here with the orange inside it you can tell it because it's the one with the most pins Basically on the side of the frame, there is a little cutout just below that one there. And you can actually just feed this all the way through and it hopefully will end up underneath the frame, which then obviously connects to the motor. Might have to do a little fishing job with a pair of long nose pliers just to grab hold of that and pull it in. There you go. Back to the box of bits. The other thing we need to connect is the uh, the speed sensor. So I'm gonna take this end, I'm just gonna thread it through there. It's a little bit tight, but you'll get it through there. I'm gonna leave it like this for now because obviously this speed sensor will go somewhere around here. I'll just double check it at the end because I'm not sure if this might pinch um, between the suspension. Set the other bits for the speed sensor aside for now. Now it's motor time. So I've separated these two wires, the power wires and the um, display and the throttle. It's all in one, that connector. Um, and then these ones are going aside. You've got the um, speed sensor behind coming out that way. So if we split these up, it gives you a bit more space in there. There's brake lever sensor wires in here as well, so I'm not gonna bother with it this stage because I haven't got any brake levers with um, sensors because I'm using Hope brakes. Um, you can use the magnets and all of that, but I'm gonna leave that for now um, and then we'll just get this done. So the other connectors aren't gonna be used, only just that one for the speed sensor. So let's get the motor in then. So frame on its side, we can start connecting stuff up. So start with the power, love Anderson connectors. And then the display and all of that. And the speed sensor. What you can do with these other connectors is kind of tuck them up in that tube if you can actually get it in there. The idea with this is this bit goes in first and then the motor just pivots backwards onto those other two holes. So let's do that. I've got these two in fine, it's just a nut and a washer. But um, this one here is being a right pig, it's almost like jammed. So I'm gonna have to um, do something with this. But yeah, anyway, I'll get these two tightened up and then maybe it might loosen that off a bit. Right, so I sorted it, got it in now. Bit of GT85 and a rubber mallet. Stick this out of casing and see what it looks like. Nice. Right guys, check this out. Started to make a bit of progress now. So we've got the Fox 36 e-bike forks on the front. These are the e-bike specific version of the Fox 36 forks. Amazing bit of kit. Um, so I've got those installed. I won't, I didn't kind of film the kind of usual setup of putting the headset on and stuff like that. Uh, excuse my bare feet in here um, because that's standard bike stuff if you want to know how to put a headset and stuff like that I'm just going to check out there's loads of videos on that sort of thing so this frame uses a standard head tube it's just like a one and a half inch tapered um, head tube so pretty much any headset will work standard sizes um, but I'll leave the links and stuff to, to all this in the description um, so that's installed I've got Hope Spacer here just to bring it up a little bit um, and then we've got the Hope Stem on the top which is just an awesome looking bit of kit um, again, I've chosen most Hope stuff because you know the quality is just awesome and it's and it's pretty lightweight as well. Not that it really matters. So we've got a nuke proof carbon bar on here, a little bit of rise, um, and some nuke proof grips as well. So moving over to the back, you can see a lot of my nuke proof stuff and my Hope stuff. Um, I've got the seat clamp, which is a nuke proof one, and then this seat post, which kind of matches the front. It's not perfect match, but it kind of looks quite good. I've stuck the rear caliper on, which is the Hope Tech 3 E4. I think that's what it is. Um, but I had these knocking around from the from the other build. So I've kind of reused these on this. Um, so I've got the rear one here. It had these really kind of fat braided hoses and I wasn't sure if those were actually gonna fit. Cause you, what you've got to do is you've got to route them through um, this motor compartment under here. And I thought it was a bit tight, but actually it works pretty well. And that goes through there inside, you can't even see it, um, and then comes out the top. So it will work. There's actually one space here which hasn't got the kind of the indent, so you can actually get this in there with the wires for the display and stuff. So that's a good way to do it if you're gonna use some kind of fat hoses. Otherwise, normal hoses would just fit in, obviously, these ones. So I've got my rear lever on here. This needs bleeding, so I'm gonna have to sort that out. 
um, and this cable here is for the for the rear met so that's going to go that goes through there that fits in there nicely as well comes out over here obviously it's going to be on this side so i've got all that to install the rest of the parts are actually coming in another box so i'm waiting for that stuff to come so this is really getting there now guys i'm going to nick the front brake off the trek because i've got a nice hope floating brake disc on that trek bike um, which isn't really necessary so i'm going to put that one onto this one and then i'm going to get another floating disc for the back as well to match it so we're going all out on this build guys this is a front one that's going on there these are amazing these discs you'll never walk one of these it is just indestructible the only thing is i don't think you can use these on any other calipers because of these kind of rivets that stick out there anyway i've transferred the um the front caliper over i've just put it in place there and then got the front lever on there as well i know there'll be a few people commenting because there always is saying these levers aren't in the right places but basically i've left it like this so that this reservoir is flat so you can bleed them easier other bits have arrived nice flat tires in there right guys a little update then so i've got it hanging on the wall now so i can actually kind of work on it a bit easier these are just little brackets i just picked them up from a local halfords they seem to work super cheap cheaper than a big stand that i can't fit in here anyway um i've bled that rear brake now so that's that should be good to go um this section here needs some work now so what i've what i've got is you actually get a you get a chain wheel with the bafang motor um which has a chain guard on it which just looked hideous to me so i've taken it off i've also decided i'm probably not going to use this particular chain ring either so i've got myself a race face version which is a hell of a lot lighter it's supposed to be strong these are narrow wide um, configuration so that's better for your chain not coming off and actually this is steel and it is actually narrow wide as well so this would probably be fine um, but you know i'm going to chop it in for the for the race face one because why not eh? i've got these um these crank arms as well you get some standard buffang ones but I've got these ones which have been hanging around for a while, so I'm going to use these, a bit more lightweight. These are especially for e-bikes as well, so um, this is designed for the Bosch motor, but it fits right on the Bafang, no problem at all. It's this, I actually my video is probably going to get demonetized if I say that, so <laughs> um, it's actually that IS mount um, version uh, which goes over that spline there. Now this thing, now this is the bottom bracket fixing, see that? It's um, got 16 splines around the edge of it, um, which allows you to put it on with um, the normal kind of tool that you get. It goes on opposite thread, so you're turning left to screw it up. So that goes on, obviously, after you put your chain ring on. So what I'm gonna do now is mount that race face chain ring and then, um, and then stick that on. And then we can start doing the pedals. Um, all the other bits have turned up now. So I've got wheels, I've got rear mech. It's all here, shock. Um, so yeah, everything's here apart from the battery. Well, there's the chain ring, it's a hell of a lot lighter. How ghetto does that look? It looks about the same thickness, so it shouldn't be a problem with the bulk spacings or anything like that. Well, so I'm just holding up to the spider. So if you want to get one of these, this is actually 130 BCD, and this is a 44 tooth basically to match the other one. I may experiment with different tooth numbers, but I'm going to start off with 44, see what happens. There you go, all on. So much lighter. This is supposed to be super heavy duty. A lot of people have tested these on the M620 motor as well, so that's good. So we can get that on there now. Yeah, that looks awesome. Right, something I forgot to mention while I was talking about routing all these cables under here. Um, this is the speed sensor for the um, for the speed controller. So this actually has two, there's two different points on here on the frame. Um, you know, so this frame is designed for the Bafang motor uh, in this way. So you've got a screw that goes through here. There's a little rubber cap and you take that off and there's a screw. So that goes into there. Really, we should, probably should be using hex nut because it is like a Phillips screw that comes with the Bafang kit, but I'll probably get something changed with that. Um, and that cable runs in here. So that's another thing that's got to go through this um, section here. But the good thing is there is space in here you can slide the cables and stuff up into this tube and actually kind of make a bit of space if you if you're stuck but this just senses the speed um on the wheel speed because there's no other way of the bike actually knowing how fast it's going um because obviously everything's done with the the mid drive so that's that solves that problem right let's get this nipped up then a bit of grease on there wouldn't go amiss crank arms this one's labeled for drive side so that goes on there so after you've screwed the main bit up then you put the little cap on the top right that's that done i've got these pedals I'm not sure if they're a bit garish or not, but I don't know. In hindsight, maybe I should have went for black, but we'll see. It kind of goes with the blue on the shop there. Pedal's done. It's quite nice. 
I've got this rear shock here, and I don't even know if it's going to work that well, but it's an X Fusion one. Doesn't really match with the front suspension, I know, that's sort of standard, but um, we'll probably swap that out for a Fox one anyway. See how it works anyway, it might be okay. I stuck the wheels on. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the finished thing yet, um, because well, you probably would have seen it at the beginning of the video anyway, but this is looking insane. Just stuck a bit of pressure in them. So these rims are pretty wide. They are. So the outside of the rim is 47, and I'm presuming the inside is going to be something about like 35. So these are like plus size rims. So you get a three inch tire on here. You definitely fit a three inch, you'd fit more than a three inch in here. These are 2.6s on here at the moment. Um, yeah, you definitely get a three in there. You definitely get a three inch wide. I wouldn't probably go any further than that. This is the thing with this, these are boost wheels as well, so they've got a bit of a wider hub, and they're actually quite difficult to get hold of, this sort of wheel. You'd have to probably build a wheel if you were getting it from this country. Um, I, I was struggling to find a wheel that was actually suitable um, for this job, so it would have been a wheel build, but you know, our guys over there in, uh, in China can just basically do this for us. So these are beautifully true, no problem at all. I mean, lovely wheels. And, um, and the tyres, obviously the tyres are swabs. Of course you can get them in the UK, but actually it's better to have the tyre and the tube um, actually on the wheel when they're shipped. If the wheel gets a knot whilst it's shipping, it won't bend. Right, so next up guys, I'm gonna stick this shiny new Hope disc on the front wheel. Don't touch the disc. It's a very satisfying part of the build process, this, all these next bits, because it's just basically bolting things together. Things like kind of installing this brake disc, look at that. Just looks awesome, doesn't it? She's pretty much nearly done, guys. So I've got the discs and the calipers on, looking sweet. Brakes have been bled. I need a new diaphragm for this, which I've got. I need to just install that, so it's just not biting enough uh, for my liking. But I think it is the diaphragm because it kind of swelled up. So that's that needs to be sorted. Rear brakes on as well. I had to use spacers. Right, the rear mechs on as well. No problem with that. This might need to be pulled out a little bit because of that. Now I'm still waiting for the battery, guys. Even though I have got a Kirby Bite battery on here as well from the from one of the other kits. Now it does actually fit. Um, it's not as nice looking as the proper one that goes on here, but it does actually work. So if you have actually got one of these batteries already and you are thinking about this getting this frame. I mean, you know, it's not perfect because you've got this area here it doesn't fit into, um, but it does mount on the bike and it does actually work. I've just done a couple of tests just spinning it up and everything like that. So I'll give you some feedback on how it actually rides, but that's a good option. We now just need to wait for the battery to turn up, which should be coming today. I'm really excited about this because it's going to look so slick. It's designed for this frame and it all will just fit in nicely so there'd be no gaps or anything. It will just look brilliant. Also, I've gone and ordered a Fox shop for the rear. Try saying that when you've had a few. Um, I couldn't resist it. Just gonna replace this one because it's a bit old cheapo. I had to get some mounting hardware um, made up, especially for it, because this is a 25 mil gap with an eight mil um, bolt through. So they actually have to make this. And to do that, I used a company here in the UK called TF Tune, which have been brilliant. So, so slick, really good customer service. And yeah, they're making them up and they're gonna fit them to the shop. So we can just basically bolt that new shop right in. Whilst I'm here guys, check this out though. Look at this display, how nice is that? It's still got the protective cover on, but that is really slick and it just goes with the bike so well. It's also got a light sensor here as well, so it will dim when it gets dark. And there's a little handlebar switch which controls pedal assist. You've got info there, so scroll through different pages, on and off the lights. Um, I think it's possible to add lights onto this controller as well, so it will turn them on and off on there, on that button. Uh, but you can get into various menus and stuff by um, by touching that. And on the subject of the display, you've actually got some pages here which show you information about what's actually happening. Um, this is the battery information page, which isn't populated at the moment because there is, this is capable, this controller, of actually connecting to a special BMS, which actually gives all this information to the um, to the controller. So you'll actually have, if you scroll through the pages here, you know, through the next page there, so you've got cycle times there, you know, last charge, total cell. Um, I need to look at this properly, but basically cell voltages on there are possible. It's possible to do all of this. Now with the battery that I've got coming, it doesn't have that BMS in, but I'm either gonna get another battery sample with that BMS or we're gonna fit that BMS to the existing battery. So this will be quite interesting for those guys that wanna see all this information on, on your bike. It's a really powerful system. This is kind of taking everything that we've done with conventional e-bikes and putting it on a proper electric mountain bike so you're getting the benefit of both worlds. So this isn't just like a motorcycle which you can just twist throttle and wheelie up the road. 
this is a real bike that actually can handle trails properly and everything else. So this is going to be something to compete with the big brands who are making e-bikes and charging thousands and thousands of pounds too much for them. Batteries here. Right, here's the battery then guys. So it's a 48 volt, 14 amp hour. So it's a little bit less than the Kirby bike kits, but it's a little bit lighter as well. It's better for this sort of um, this sort of e-bike. And the mounting system is really interesting actually, because you actually have like a top section, which goes under there. That goes on the frame, at the top of the frame. And then that goes at the bottom of the frame, actually in that little kind of indent section, which you've seen. Basically the batteries are slots in between these two brackets and it locks in place. Um, and then that means the battery is actually kind of as close to the frame as possible and you, you haven't got kind of bits hanging around and wires hanging out and all that sort of stuff. So it's very, very kind of, it's as close as you'll get to like an in-frame battery, but it's also good because it means it's non-proprietary. You haven't got any of this situation with, you know, the only battery that will fit is the battery that's actually made for the bike. And this is a 672 watt hour battery as well. So that's higher than anything you'll find on the market in the kind of well-known e-mountain e bike stuff. Right, so on this bottom mount, there's screws, basically one here, one here, and then those two there you can see at the top. So you basically just have to unscrew all of those um, to get this plate out. And then once you get access to the plate, you can actually see these these holes here, these elongated ones, which then go on that on the frame there. So you can kind of get that lined up. So I'm going to put that on now, and what I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use... I'm actually going to use these little torx bolts, which are for brake discs. But um, what I'm going to do with the kits, I'll get these included. So, and we'll use hex bolts actually, because that'd be a lot easier. I'm taking this connector block off as well, which is just two screws, just so I can access that bottom uh, bottom screw. I've got the little connector block here. I'm going to solder the red wire from the battery connector to the actual control. I'm going to solder these wires rather than putting a connector on because. They're going to be in here forever. Um, and then I've, I've got some heat shrink down here. Always put your heat shrink on first, then you can slide it back over uh, once you're done. So let's get those done. Right, that's one side done. I'll let that cool before I put the heat shrink on. So the way I usually join quite fat wires is I kind of just get the two ends and just push them into each other and then kind of rub it and make it as small as possible. And that way you can get your heat shrink over and you don't have a big bulge of, of solder and all that by the time you're finished. And it makes it a bit easier to solder as well because you haven't got to hold all this stuff whilst you're doing it. You can just put some solder on there and it'll, it'll join. Those two are done, so I'll just get the heat shrink and put them up. If you've got any sharp bits, you can file them off or just chop them off with um, a pair of cutters. Just make sure there's no sharp bits because they will just pierce straight through that heat shrink. And just get that heat shrink shrunk. Well, that's that done. We can tuck the wires in after, but now I need to just screw that this terminal block. It can only go one way, so you're not going to get anything wrong that way. Right, it's all in there neat. Pretty easy to do. Just get the screws back in there. There's also a little screw in there which you can put back in to just help hold this all together. But it's got two there, one there. So yeah, looking good. We can have a look. Test fit the battery. Just basically slot that in there like that. So you can see basically how it's going to look. Um, you know, very, very neat against the frame. Just need to put this top bracket in and we're done. All right, there you go, we're all done. How neat does that look? I'm trying to do this one-handed, but basically that slots in nicely. And then you've got the, um, the key lock on the other side, which can basically just, just secure that in. But we need to take this out, because I'll show you why. You can easily get this battery out just by pulling that up like that. Just pull the battery out. So the reason why we need to take it out is we need to turn the battery on, which is the switch there. And then you've got your battery meter there, which shows you how many bars battery you've got. A couple of trials bikes going past that side. So you can join them. Yeah, so you can just fire the controller up. And there you go. All on. Looks like it needs a charge though. It's at dead on 48 volts. Right guys, it's a few days later now. The bike is basically finished. I've spent the last like few days just kind of you know, ironing out all the little kinks and bits and pieces that needs to sorting out, just bedding stuff in, tightening stuff up, all that sort of usual bike stuff, you know, but the performance, whew, the power of that motor is something else. And this lightweight battery as well, it's just awesome. I'm really, really pleased with it. So guys, here it is. What do you reckon? It is a bad boy, isn't it? it does look like it means business, doesn't it? take this bad boy for a ride then. I'll tell you what, you notice how light this thing is compared to the other bikes I've built. It is super, super light. 
need to weigh it actually to find out exactly but the frame itself only weighs about four kilos so that's pretty good right just cruising along pretty nicely that's the great thing about these bikes is that you know if you're like me when you live somewhere where there's kind of trails dotted around but it's difficult to make a route you know with all the uh, all the trails so you can basically just use the bike to just cruise up there and then get where you want to get and then you can start having some fun so i'm just heading up the road there's a little off-road section up here which i can have a little play on and i can show you what this thing can do so the first thing you notice about this is that torque that torque is just absolutely insane like it will just flip the front wheel up no problem at all i mean you obviously you expect that on a kind of mountain bike anyway but this just gives you i mean you just don't even have to try it it's just literally just like comes straight up <laughs> so this is a little section guys bit of mud on here so this is just a cis level two just absolutely flying around no problem at all you can probably actually crank that up a little bit on those ones so what i'm going to do is get to the bottom of this hill and i'll show you hill climbing capability with this it would be better if i actually had the thumb throttle connected because then it will show you that i'm not actually pedaling at all but i haven't put the thumb throttle on at the moment mainly because i wanted to use it pedal assist only right guys you can see how steep this is i'm not sure if you can but i'll probably put the other camera on as well give you another angle so you can see exactly how steep it is um so i'm in assist level five i'm in about the fifth sprocket in and i'm basically my suspension's in hard i'm just gonna pedal sitting down so not even giving any just to show you that i'm not actually kind of you know pedaling that hard and then um, we're just going to go up this hill so this is our easy this bike just climbs up this hill so i can feel the front wheel just basically popping like i need to move forward a bit to stop it you know otherwise i'll end up on my backside but there you go so that's how easy it is to just climb um, i mean it's just stunning the amount of power this thing's got is bonkers the thing about this as well is there's another mode so there's a sport mode as well so that wasn't even in like the highest setting so just gives you an idea of how much power this thing's actually got I'll tell you what guys this thing is really blooming awesome so i'm gonna make loads more videos about this i think i'll call this one a day because <laughs> it's probably long enough as it is um so i hope you've enjoyed it guys don't forget check the website out for the frame and all the stuff you can get um, i'm going to keep adding more stuff on there about this bike all the bits and pieces you need eventually there will be full bikes as well available also if you're a dealer as well and you want to get involved hit me up my email address is in the description and also as usual if you've got any requirements you need batteries for e-bikes you need problems resolving all that sort of stuff just hit me up in the email i can't promise i'll get back to you really quickly but i'll do my best and um, as normal leave stuff in the comments as well and we'll catch you in the next video guys